thank everybody for coming out again tonight. Um, we got a good program up here. We're going to get to listen to a uh, lot of coaches tell a few fibs. Get an idea on what they're going to say for the season. Um, first of all, uh, we're real honored tonight. We're going to have a nice speaker tonight. Our first speaker and master of ceremonies is going to be Steve Byro, also known as Doug Coach. Okay, wait a minute. Thank you, sir. It is, uh, is my honor on behalf of the Ohio State Athletic Department and our football program to come on down 70 West to uh, what I always considered one of the hotbeds of uh, high school football, Madison County. Uh, I can't be more thrilled to be with you ladies and gentlemen and youngsters tonight because uh, nothing quite epitomizes the things that you guys do on that football field that uh, uh, down the road will benefit not only yourselves and what I always consider the game of life that one of you might go on to be an All-American for Ohio State and God forbid one of you go to that team up north. So God bless all of you. My name's Steve Byron, I do the coach. I've been doing the coach for about five years and uh, I met with Joe and John a couple times to go over your program and he said this is something that you guys annually do. And uh, I'm getting into emceeing things. Uh, what I will do is take you through a little bit of my program as Woody Hayes in 1990. I also won the Dick Vitale sound like on, uh, on ESPN. I'll give you a little bit of that voice and uh, we'll roast these coaches a little bit and then uh, Larry Petroff, the uh, recruiting coordinator for Ohio State, will, will finish up the program and I'll come back and give some closing comments. I'm only 30 years old. I always give crowds anywhere I go a little biographical. Uh, one of the first things that people go through their mind is say, well, he might look like Woody, and I do do the voice. I grew up in the town of Avon, Ohio. It's about uh, 18 miles west of Cleveland. Uh, I never played for Woody Hayes. I, I wasn't any good. I, I went to a high school that uh, coaches will know, Lakewood St. Edward. Uh, it was a good football school, and uh, I tell you what, I couldn't carry the trombone up there in the band. But uh, I idolized Woody Hayes. I've always been a class clown. I can hear somebody talk and, and mimic that, and that's how I got into Woody. I, uh, my first break was in 1988 for the Ohio State-Michigan game. Uh, Dick Vermeil and Gary Bender were in town, and uh, Coach Dudley was a quarterback coach at the time and said, Steve, go in and just start mimicking like the old man. I did that. I ended up getting on the air, and uh, that's where it started. I won't bore you with any more of my bio and just give you a little bit of what he hates. Guys, I don't know if there's anything in life that quite epitomizes the fun, the folklore, the drive, and the desire that football brings to Columbus, Ohio, and the state of Ohio. And you know, the longer that I've been here, the less I begin to care what the hell the media, the faculty, and the fans say. And I've got to be honest with you, and this is a, a downright jest. Uh, for those guys that think they can do a better job of coaching football, and I challenge each and every one of them, in the arts, in the drama department, I don't know of any extracurricular that fills that damn stadium 90, uh, six times a year, about 92,000 uh, clip. And if they're going to get it on Coach Hayes, don't forget we pay all Get that. And if there's a history professor out there or an English prof that thinks he can do a better job of coaching football than I can of teaching history, I'll, I'll switch places with him in an instant and I'll do a better job in his classroom talk about Patton and I'll go in English and talk about Emerson than that fellow could ever, ever do of coaching our football program. And that's the problem with life. And you know, I can put that in the, into 1993 with Don James. 1978-79, I always, as you know, fought with administration. And they started cutting scholarships back then. Now look what it has become. You're ruining a great, great sport. And they thought I was uh, senile and fickle. Let me tell you this about Ohio State football. 
Uh, I've had my run-ins with the administration. I didn't much care for uh, Hugh Heinzen uh, in a lot of them. <laughs> and of course, Arch Griffin was a great, great ball player. And Corny Green was our option quarterback. And you're damn right, he was driving a new car. As long as we got W's on Saturday, I told him he could drive whatever he wanted. Because it's not that bad to cheat if you can't cover your tracks. So everybody got a problem. That's a smart coach. Hell, everyone cheats. Don't dare get caught. And I'm not saying that about James, but I'm saying uh, times are getting tough. And I don't, uh, it doesn't surprise me 15 years of sitting in heaven with Bear Bryant that the game's going where it is. And we're doing a really good thing. Just like Schleister, probably the most talented quarterback I ever had. But uh, he can't go to Beulah with Earl every night and expect to be a positive citizen in this country. That's not going to happen. And I won't, I won't uh, do any of that. Woody, of course, 28 years, legendary. I'll take you through a little bit of locker room Woody Hayes. Guys, there's three things. Three things that win football games. The team that hits the hardest, the team that has that drive that Saturday, and the team that's mentally prepared. Hell, everybody wants to win football games. Are you willing to prepare to win? If you do those three things, and you represent Ohio State University, you're going to do a great, great, great job. Nine out of ten times, you're going to come out on top. Now, you don't always win. They say, Coach Hayes always want to win. If I don't want to win, why the hell do we keep scoring? I don't play chess and I don't play ping pong. We play football because it builds integrity. And I say my kids come out of our football program, they do great things in life. And in essence, football is a part of life if you want to look at it that way. But nothing comes easy. Hell, everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to go to the Rose Bowl, but who's willing to work? Let me say, talk about great ball players. Arch Griffin. Arch did more with less than any Division I A college halfback to ever play the game. People say, Coach Hayes, why are you so high on Arch? Was it the fact that he went to Rose Bowl four straight years I'd shake my head in the West Coast media and say, Coach Hayes, you're really a little bit off on him. Was it the fact that he was the only two-time Heisman? I'd shake my head again and say, no, sir. Was it that Arch never lost to that team up north? And that, that, that paid a pretty penny. That's not how we judged Arch. Thing that I judged Arch Griffin on, if you asked him who meant the most in his life, it was his mother and father. And gee whiz, if you ask me who meant the most in mine, it was my mother and father because they meant that much to me and they stressed education. And the first time my father went to high school was a high school principal. And if you check the record of the Griffins, they all went on and did great things. But that wasn't a killer with Arch. I'd say, Coach, there's still one more thing that Arch did. And I'd get, him, get that little smile on my face and say, ladies and gentlemen, think about Arch. He graduated four years. No summer school, two Big Ten titles, two Rose Bowls, never lost that team up north. But he graduated in four years. He brought Ohio State football to a great level, which we always dream of. What recruiting coordinators tell you it's all about. Now, it doesn't come alive all, all the time, but Arch did it. And that's what I was most proud of. Of course, we've had our, our chances with great, great linebackers. Randy Granishaw did a heck of a job on defensive side of the football. Jim Stillwagon did a great job. Of course, we kid about Tom Cousineau. And I'm not going to get into any Cousineau jokes whether or not he was left to center. But let me tell you this. He's the all-time leading tackler. And come to think about Tom, you defensive coaches will uh, understand this. Come to think of it, he always was jumping on the pile, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I take a lot of my material, a lot of film. Uh, I'll take credit for that, thank you. I'll leave you with Woody, with uh, probably the, the Nayers 
And the doubters will say maybe when Woody should have went out, 1974, 75, at the end of the Arch Griffin era. Take Woody sitting in about 18A with the t-shirt I have underneath that says Ohio State Athletics, and he's got his whistle, and he's still in good health. He's got that big smile on his face, and he wears the confidence of Ohio State football, whether it be the administration or the media. That's how Woody addressed the media in his 27th season. You know, guys, <laughs> we're here again, and I said last year would be my last, and, and here I am, and I'll tell you what, uh, I begin to care less what the hell you guys are going to write about me again. Uh, my full back, I lost in eligibility. My seniors are now gone. Uh, to be quite frank with you, the quarterback uh, tore a rotator cuff and don't think he can throw the football. And I don't even know if he can hand it off. I don't know if we'll even be able to, to honestly uh, field a team this year up in Columbus, Ohio, up at Ohio State. And I'm going to tell you guys that in, in Chicago and take that back to West Coast. We may never, ever win a game in Ohio State. And them dumbass and I had those guys up north facility running gassers all got over and over again. That's why I was a little bit disappointed. I'm going to talk about his boss. John Cooper said three weeks ago it was the greatest team he's ever had in six years. Great, great thing to say. By God, don't put that pressure on yourself. You're better off to say it's the worst team sandbag and I have one of these fellows up here today sandbags I'm gonna let you know about that but you've got to let them get off their horses in that sense but back to what he talking about what Ohio State meant to him Columbus Ohio guys I wish everything could bring the fun the fulfillment and the downright camaraderie of football brings to this great, great community. And, uh, uh, a year from now, I might not be around here, and there'll be some old sap sitting in this chair, and he'll be addressing the state of the arts of Ohio State football, and, and uh, maybe you'll recollect about what Woody said or what I did. But let me, let me close with this, guys, that in, in all of my days as head football coach at this university, things that we stress at Ohio State is education, family, and values. Our kids come here for one reason and one reason only, that's to get an education. Through football, which I believe is an impetus in life, if I give them one chance, which may be that fellow going off right tackle, to be successful in life, which football breeds, I've done my job. That may be more than the kid in the drama class who doesn't say a for four years and graduates 3-8 and go to society, and in my sense, it doesn't contribute. The naysayers always coach, uh, Count Coach Hayes out. I don't much care. And I'm going to tell you this in closing, that uh, the longer that I do this and the longer that you guys do that, I'm here and you're here, and I don't much give a damn what the hell you say about Woody Hayes. But if I go out in a, in a bang, and if my kids graduate, and if my fifth team or nothing makes me more proud, and a fellow that I remember all names, I don't remember him, and today he's a doctor in Ohio State football, Ohio State University, Columbus, Ohio, we've done our job. And that puts everyone aside. You know, life's fickle. And uh, I used to say you win with people, and people only talk about you if you're doing something right. They only talk about you if you're doing something right. Jealousy's a bad, bad evil. Don't dare get caught up in that, it'll trap you. Arch Griffin didn't. Stillwagon didn't. Gratishar didn't. But don't judge Ohio State on me because I made a lot of mistakes, which I paid dearly. But if you come to Ohio State and you get an education, you go home tonight and tell your mom and dad you love them, and they've done a great job, you can't ask for more than that. Do we like to lose? Hell no. Do we keep score? Yes. Because in defeat builds character. But you don't dare want too many defeats or I won't sit in front of you and talk. And that's the nature of life. If you sell insurance, if your policies don't cover the disabled, you no longer sell. It's all sequential and I've always understood that. What they don't understand, the media, 
in the difference. So on behalf of Ohio State Athletic Department and Arch Griffin, let me say this about Arch in closing. I, uh, I hate when fellows say Arch was the only two-time Heisman winner and he didn't uh, deserve that. Arch meant more of our football program in terms of carrying the football and being a leader than any, any ball player that ever played the game. And I'll stack them up there against the greats. Now, is he as good as Herschel Walker? And you get into that? No. Because is today's doctors better than yesterday's? Life changes. It changes, and we could go on and on forever. I'd like to welcome you to the Madison County football kickoff, and by God, go Buckeyes, because in all seriousness, as much kidding as we say on the air, Coach Petroff and John Cooper this year are going to have a great, great year because they're loaded. They're loaded. We're going to stay healthy and do a great, great job. Thank you. on ESPN, another voice that I play with, Dick Vitale. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you talk great coaches in collegiate basketball. Hey, who's my top three number one coach? And the people from Ohio say, oh, baby, I like Bobby Knight from YU. When you talk about sensationalism, if you talk about guys at X and O, I like the general. My player of the year, didn't I tell you, I'll go with Calvert Chaney. Is he awesome, baby? Is he sensational? Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Everybody wants to do Vital and take it up to that next level. One of the things I do with Dick Vital is you talk a little verbatim like this, you know. Hey, I talked to Digger Phelps, and you really talk about why he didn't leave Notre Dame. Maybe go back to the Don James incident with the scholarship limitations. The things they put on the youngsters. Hey, you know what Digger said? Bye-bye, baby. I don't need it anymore. And let me say this for the coaches that have been in it for a lifetime. Maybe the game has changed. And why should they put up with maybe the administrator saying, hey, I need a 22 on the SAT. If not, he can't play. Are you kidding me? This guy's a superstar. And fight and fight and fight when he could go over to NBC and make $300,000 a year, like I do, with the big mouth that roars. They say, Dickie B, you can't coach. But I say, you know what, baby? I can coach as good as you. I don't have to put up with the ADs and the administrators. All I do is meet you in the bank. Are you kidding me, big guy? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> If you turn around now, um, we're going to have a small exhibition of cheerleading, I guess, from the Madison Plains Golden Eagle Cheerleading Squad. Coach from 
from uh, Madison Green, Golden Eagles. As uh, I'm not done with you yet, Dale. I uh, understand you're superstitious. You're into four leaf clovers. Anybody can attest to that. Uh, I think the key, and I've done a little bit of research on each of these coaches, uh, the thing about Dale that I found in my uh, research is that he was an ex-head football coach at London, and I did receive a telegram today at work before I came out to Madison County, quote, unquote, they do not miss you, Dale. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, Dale Brown. I'm kind of sitting here next to, I idolize Woody, spent half my life idolizing Woody Hayes, and uh, this guy just, I mean, I've read all his books and I've read all about him and spent half my time following around the country listening to, to uh, clinic speeches and things, and this guy gets me excited just listening to him. Um, it's hard because I know some of the young kids on our team, but I don't even remember Woody Hayes, but uh, I grew up idolizing the man. And this guy I went to college with, and uh, I can say a lot of good things about him, but I can't remember anything. So uh, he's, he's had an outstanding career coaching and, and with Ohio State, and uh, I know he's expecting great things. He's, he's been around, coached a lot of different places and uh, a lot of universities and has a lot of experience. <clears throat> Dick Vitale, I, I don't want to say anything about him. I'm not going to idolize him. I'd like to mention a couple of things. First of all, uh, we're in a unique situation this year. I mean, most people are aware of it. Uh, we went back to the Kenton Trace Conference in, in uh, the southern part of our uh, county and, and over around Springfield. But we still play West Jeff and we still play London. We tried to get John Gennaro on our schedule. We're still trying to do it so we play all three county schools. But we're very young this year. We've got, uh, we graduated 18 seniors and we expect to uh, improve week by week. But probably the, the two of the toughest games we'll play all year long will be against London and West Jeff. Um, they've got outstanding people back. I know London's got an outstanding football team coming back. I made the playoffs last year. Uh, West Jeff's got an outstanding team coming back. We have North Union as our second game. We probably played three of the toughest games in our first three games. Then we open up our league play with Cedarville, and Cedarville made the playoffs last year, and they have uh, everybody back off of their team. So we've got a real tough schedule ahead of us. We've got a lot of young kids that are going to have to mature in a hurry. We've got probably a half a dozen sophomores that are going to see a lot of action this year. Um, we only have, uh, I think, 11 seniors on the team. Uh, the thing I'm most proud of, I think, my first year at Madison Plains, uh, we had 34 football players in the entire program. This year we're up to 54 players, and uh, we're building, we're still getting there. We have a lot of young kids playing. We have 17 freshmen out. Unfortunately, we won't have a freshman team because 15 of them are wide receivers. So uh, we're not real big at the freshman level, so we won't be playing much of a freshman schedule. But they're outstanding young kids, and they're working extremely hard. Um, we open up with London this Friday night, and I'm not going to say too much about London because they, you know, they, they deserve a lot of credit with the year they had last year, and I'm sure Coach Dogmar is going to have a lot of great things to say about, about his kids. But uh, we watched them play, and, and they've had two good scrimmages, and they've got some real quickness and some size on the line. We opened up with Logan Elm in a scrimmage two weeks ago and had a great scrimmage and, and beat them 3-1 to one and put in a new offense. We weren't sure how it was going to work, and then we went against Independence last Friday night, and uh, it was just uh, it was probably the biggest nightmare we've ever had. Um, Independence backfield is made up of all juniors who won the 400 meter relay championship last year in the state. And uh, I mean, we just chased them all over the field. And, uh, and about half time, I think it was 34 to nothing. I don't know if we'll play, and I don't want to take anything away from London or, or Jonathan Arnold or West Jeff, but I honestly don't think we'll play anybody as quick as that all year long. Uh, they remind me a little bit of London's team last year and the, and the great speed they had last year. But we went over to Independence, and uh, I knew after warm ups we were done because uh, you know, they came out and did a warm up that kind of scared us to death. And, and uh, they brought they brought about 70 kids out there were hooping and hollering and screaming. And the funny thing was, two years ago we went to Independence and beat those guys 34 to nothing in a scrimmage. But they were all freshmen. And they all started as freshmen at Independence, and this year they're all juniors. And they kind of put the hammer to us. So really, it, it was a good test for us because we'll kind of find out how good we are. I really don't know how good we're going to be yet with all the holes we have to fill. But I'm hoping we find out this Friday night. Again, uh, we play London at 7.30 on Friday night. I'm sure everyone knows that. Um, we're expecting it to be uh, standing room only. Um, every year we stand up here and, and, and half the coaches, we kind of lie about what we're going to have. And you'll hear Dave Metz stand up here and he'll never have anything good to say about it. He's slow and he's small and they're weak and everything else. And every year they put together a great program. Dave, I think they've got 80 or 90 kids out for football this year. And you know, I, I can't say enough about the job he's done in London with those kids. But uh, we're going to try to do our best. We're going to put in, we put a new offense in this year. It's called the run and shoot. It's a double slot motion offense. Um, 
we shot a little bit against Logan Elm, and we shot ourselves a little bit against Independence. I don't know if we completed more than two passes in that whole ball game. So I'm not sure what we're going to do if somebody shuts down our passing game. Uh, well, we may have to call it the run and run or the shoot and shoot. I don't know. But we're, we're working on it. It's new for us. I've got a great coaching staff. I'll tell you another unique situation. Uh, this may be the only school in the state of Ohio that I know of where the, uh, the principal of the building is also the head football coach and the superintendent is the defensive coordinator. So I don't know if any of you are aware of that, but that's the way it is. And our, we've got some great coaches that are putting in a great amount of time with our kids. And uh, we're expecting great things of our kids. Again, in our Kent and Trace Conference, I really miss them. I, I like the Buckeye Athletic Conference. I really do. Um, but a lot of people underestimate the teams that we play in, in the Kent and Trace Conference with Southeastern and Greenview and Cedarville. And there's usually two at Waynesville, and there's had two or three teams that have made the playoffs every year. And a couple of those kids from some of those schools are playing at Ohio State. Their kicker happens to be from Waynesville. And uh, there's some great competition down there. So we're going to have our hands full, but we expect uh, our seniors are. One thing Coach Hayes always says, you know, I read his book, you win with people. You win with people. And, and one thing we do have, we have quality people. Our kids really care about each other and they care about their community and, and, uh, and they care about their school. And if that means anything at all, we'll have a successful year this year. So best of luck to everybody up here, and I thank you for your attention. Okay, now if you want to turn around, we're going to have the London cheerleaders perform. your name right from the uh, London Red Raiders and uh, Dave I got your file a little bit and uh, why did I ever <laughs> talk about homework <laughs> things I thought about Dave but uh, I think are very complimentary they said of oh, the coaches up here today uh, probably a little bit of a clone of Woody Hayes and there's nothing wrong with a coach that's uh, highly motivational uh, that's emotional who's uh, very big on tradition. Um, those are nice words we say in the media about coaches that don't have a lot of talent. <laughs> and uh, in this business, when you MC, they're called filler. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, uh, coach went 8-3 uh, last year, and then 1992, which was last year, uh, their first trip to the state high school playoffs. and. Uh, Coach, why don't you tell, you what, uh, tell us what you got going on this year? 
Dave Dobbermeyer. I'd say, Steve, uh, it's really probably good that nobody got into your file, because I'm sure there'd be some pretty amazing stuff that we could dig out of that, too. But, uh, we'll all keep that to ourselves. We're really, really tickled to be here. You know, it's amazing. How long we have this, John? Four years, and uh, I remember the first year we had we had maybe half as many people here, and it shows that uh, the interest in this is certainly beginning to grow. I've been really cautioned by by our by coaching staff that uh, I guess last year when I got up here I came across as everybody left here thinking that I was telling everybody that we were going to kick their rear end, and that definitely was not what I meant. Uh, so I've been cautioned to to not come across that way. But I'm not also going to stand up here and say that we're going to that we're going to roll over and play dead either. Everybody knows anything about our football team knows that we lost a great, great group of kids last year. Carl King is probably as fine a football player as I ever coached, and Jay Hoy and John Johnson. There were some great football players on that team. And uh, those of you who had to play against us and watch us play, you know what kind of speed we had, as Dale mentioned. And uh, uh, we were good. And we missed those guys. So I, I can't figure out, to be honest with you, I don't know how we lost two football games. But I look back on that team, it was a great team. And we got beat by Northeastern at one point, and uh, Big Warner knocked us off when they shouldn't have. But, you know, the thing about football, and I think uh, Steve was talking about it, is you find out your character in, in, in uh, really difficult times. We had some really difficult times last year. Our kids really rallied really well and came back. This year's football team is missing about 16 pretty good kids. But I'm, i, I got to tell you, we got, uh, we got a bunch of good kids coming back. We have, uh, to start with Cliff Williams, who was a First team all-district performer last year as a defensive end and an offensive tackle. And Cliff's two inches taller and about 20 pounds heavier. So Aaron Roberts, a fullback. Aaron uh, was also an all-league player last year. Aaron's checking in at about 205 this year. Had a good year in the weight room. Clay Miller was an all-league player last year. So we got some football players coming back. We also have a, an undefeated JV team, a 9-0 JV team, to mix in with what we consider to be a nucleus of really, really fine football players returning. So we think that we're, uh, we certainly have the capabilities to be in the playoffs again. And I, I'm proud to be able to stand up. You know, sometimes it sounds like you're, you're really arrogant or you're pumping yourself up. I know if Dave Metz stands up here and talks about being in the playoffs, people expect that of West Jefferson. I expect West Jefferson to be in the playoffs. And I came over from Licking County where Newark Catholic was in the playoffs every year. And Licking Valley was in the playoffs every year and people expected it. And I'm not going to stand up here and say we don't expect to be back in the playoffs because we do. Now that may make Paul Jenny mad because in order to make the playoffs, we have to beat Paul Jenny's John Connor Pioneers. But Paul, that's why we play the game. And I'm not going to try to make Dale mad or Dave mad, but hey, we all go out there and play. We think we've got a good enough team that we're going to be able to get back there. Now does that mean West Jefferson can't make it? Or Madison Plains or John Connor? Hey, that's why we go out there and do it. Uh, our program has come a long way. It shows me signs of Woody Hayes, Jesus Christ, coming in here and taking over the whole thing. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't think I stood up to when you were talking there, Woody. So. <laughs> you're not Woody, that is. <laughs> <laughs> you got a kind like that. I would be remiss, you know, we look back. Those of you who've been here, well, this is my fifth year in London High School, and when we came in, the program was, uh, it was certainly struggling. We've come a long way, and I think sometimes we forget where we've, where we've come from. And uh, to go 8-2 last year, make the first ever playoff appearance was certainly an accomplishment, but I, I'd be crazy if I stood up here and tried to make any type of indication at all that it was, that it was my football team and I was the guy did it. We have some unbelievably dedicated young men who get in that weight room just as they do at West Jefferson and Jonathan Otter, and dedicate themselves to being the best football players that they can be. We have an unbelievable group of coaches. Uh, Norm Emmett was the head football coach at London High School one time and could be a head coach anywhere in the state right now. We have several other young coaches, uh, Mark Collier in particular, that certainly could be a head football coach. And I just can't tell you how easy, I know the coaches understand, how easy it is to build a good program when you surround yourself with good people. And Woody's book, Dale, that you mentioned, is you win with people. And you just cannot do it. And I just happened to be lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time to jump on this horse and ride it. Now, we're giving a good direction, there's no doubt about that. But we've got great, great kids. And I know the community of London is tickled about what's going on in our football program. We have a tough schedule. I've, I've read the paper, Paul's got a tough schedule, Dave's got a tough schedule. We played uh, five teams and won seven or more football games last year. We played Olin Tangy, who made the state playoffs. 
Northeastern, who was, was 10 and 0 last year. We got a monumental task ahead of us. And the thing I've always respected about West Jefferson and Newark Catholic and those teams that they've met, when you take the field on Friday night, everybody wants to beat you because you're West Jefferson. And a good football team, every Friday night, will be ready to play. And the challenge that I've put before our football kids this year is every night, every game is a playoff game. We go down there and play Madison Plains Friday night. Dale can talk about how young they are. They're going to want to knock our heads off. And it's going to be like that week in and week out. And the goal for us, the opportunity for us, the challenge for us is to be, be prepared every night when we step on that football field. We want to talk about being a great program. That's what it's all about. We have great, great kids, super kids, and I believe they're going to be ready for the challenge. We're going to have a good football team. It's going to be good. It's going to be good to be in London. And uh, we're going to give you the best shot we can. Thanks a lot. Okay, once again, I'm going to have you turn around. Congratulate him as a group. 
uh, the father, uh, proud father of twins. Last year was his first year as a head coach, as I understand, he went 7-3. Uh, the thing about Paul, I look at him, uh, when he comes off the bus, he's always confused as, as being one of the students. I, I think that's a drawback. But uh, he does a great job. I, I hear his father was a great coach. Uh, some of the quotes that they gave me about Paul Jenny, uh, every year it seems that his uh, team seemed to get the most improved award. I don't know if there's any uh, truth to that, and on the other stretch they say they're also known as the uh, conference doorman. So uh, I won't get into any of that, uh, I'll bring up uh, Mr. Jenny. I guess I get to speak after you now, huh? <laughs> which means I get the last say. Okay. <laughs> Um, last year I did start off with a little joke about my, my wife not being able to be here and uh, I'll stay away from the jokes on her tonight because uh, we do have a two and a half year old son and we just had a uh, boy and a girl twin Saturday, Saturday morning, 1021 in the morning so it's a little bit more recent than uh, we have twins. We, they uh, just came into the world and uh, we went to our scrimmage Saturday night down in Huntington. If you've ever been to Huntington you, get, you can't get there from here. That's basically the way it is. <laughs> It's down outside Chillicothe, and after that, you uh, just listen for the banjos, and then you'll find the place. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, I'm, not, I'm not joking, because they had kids who had beards and everything on, on the plane. You know, we weren't sure if they were coaches or what. And when you talk about the coach looking like the kids, the kids look like the coaches. But um, I'll start off with, with just a little bit. I guess it's my turn here. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Woody Hayes in my lifetime. State track meet. He always was to, was rumored to be at the state track meets because he, he liked the saying "speed kills." So he went to the state track meet to find the fastest kids. And um, I did meet Woody Hayes. I was only in third grade at the time. And um, when I said to Coach, "I'd like to play for you someday," he said the number one thing that stuck with my mind was, "You better work on your grades because that's the most important thing." And that's really stuck with me. And that's the number one thing we really talk about at Jonathan Alder. After we talk about winning football games, we're going to talk about making sure we're eligible. And uh, just get back to the point, I have met Woody Hayes, and you're not Woody Hayes. <laughs> now I can care less about Dick Vitale, so that's with basketball, and that's a dirty word. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but the thing is, Woody did forget more football than you will know. <laughs> so uh, let's get back on the program, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I did uh, get to have a little fun up here last year because I really didn't know what Madison County football was all about. Um, I do know now that it is tremendous football programs in this in this area. Um, Coach Dahlmeyer put together a tremendous team last year, and he was right with one thing he did speak about tonight. He did leave us with the opinion he was going to kick our butts last year, and that and that was true to the point. They did come out and kick us around on the field, and uh, and uh, our kids remember that, and they dedicated themselves in the weight room. So, like he said, teams are going to be out for him, and, and I believe every team is going to be, and that's and that's an aiming point for us right now. Right now. Uh, London and West Jeff are aiming points for everybody in the state, is what I see, because I grew up knowing about West Jeff football. And um, Coach Dalton, or uh, Coach Metz, I'm glad I'm sitting on this end of the table when he gets up to speak, when that lightning bolt comes down through the, through the uh, ceiling, when he starts telling his little fibs up here. So uh, <laughs> I'm glad I'm going to be down on that end of the table away from him. But um, I know West Jeff's going to have a tremendous, tremendous team this year. And um, he was saying there will be thin, but like uh, Coach Dahlmeyer said, everybody's going to be thin. We're going to have our best 11 players on, on the field. And um, for us this year, it's, it's going to require that we have some sophomores on the field, not taking anything away from our seniors. Our seniors have been great leaders this year in the weight room and in our two-day practices. Even in this heat, our, our seniors are making sure everybody's given everything they've got. And um, we got a three-year starter at center this year who is the anchor to our line. 
and that's Joel Cutler, 6'3", 225 pounds, and we depend a lot on what he's going to be doing this year. He dedicated himself to the weight room, and, and he has improved tremendously with his strength and his footwork, and, um, and I'm really grateful for that because he, he became elected as a captain this year, and the, the kids really look up to Joel in more ways than one. Um, we've had to move a lot of kids around this year. We've had to go from a two tight end offense, which we were last year to keep it simple. We didn't want to amaze our kids with our whole offensive scheme of things that we, we've thrown in some more this year. So we made it a little bit more difficult for them to learn and our line has done a tremendous job. And that goes because we have some seniors up there who are great leaders. Our, our guards who are going to be going both ways as linebackers and guards, they, they have been doing a tremendous job for us because they have to be doing a lot of pulling, a lot of trapping, everything like that, um, Derry Oder and Alan Richardson. We had to move Derry from tight end into guard, and uh, basically I asked Derry, I said, do you mind moving into guard? And, and he just showed the type of senior leader he is. Well, I can't coach, catch anyway, coach, so I might as well hit somebody. <laughs> so, uh, and, and just with the great leadership like that is what we have out of our seniors. I was telling Dave up here, our seniors this year, they'll, they'll go over the cliff for the coaches this year. Last year, we weren't sure if we were going to look over the cliff before we jump. But these guys are going to do everything for us, and that's what we ask for. And like we said, we're going to have some sophomores in key positions this year. We're going to have a sophomore quarterback this year. Jason Ferguson's going to have to call the numbers for us, but we have a lot of faith in him, and our, our line is gaining a lot of faith in him, and things are starting to look good for us in the backfield. Last year, we lost our whole backfield. We lost a quarterback, fullback, and tailback. We lost a 270-pound tackle. We lost a 210-pound guard. We lost a tight end. So we did lose quite a bit from last year's team, but the kids have really stepped it up. And right now, I can honestly say, we're not going to miss them. We're going to be better than we were last year. But in order to stay as good as we want to be, we're going to have to stay healthy. And that's the number one thing because the Madison County, again, is going to have the toughest football in this BAC league. And I hate to miss Dale's team coming out because I learned last year the Madison, uh, Madison Plains, Jonathan Alder game was one tremendous rival. Um, it ended up being uh, just a couple turnovers here and there that was the decision of the game. That game was up and down the between the 20s and the whole game. And um, I'm going to miss that game. And as soon as we can get it back on the schedule, it will be even better for us to pick up more competition. So as, as our season will go without healthy, we stay. And if we stay healthy, we will have a good season. Thank you. Okay, and now if we turn around, we will have the less Jeff Rough Rider cheerleader.
excited about this. I can't wait to go to Heine Gate on Saturday. Heine Gate. Anybody ever been to Heine Gate? Rice, Coach Rice. We might not even go to the game. <laughs> That's how it was when Woody was there. <laughs> Cooper's around, boy, you better get in there 20 minutes before kickoff. All hell's gonna break loose. <laughs> how are we gonna get in there again? Our next coach, who, uh, I don't even think I need to say anything about you, Coach Metz. Uh, they've all said it before you. And uh, this picture was a crystal ball. We all had the same thing. But uh, you're gonna come up here and well, let me say some nice things about you. First of all, the, the Dean of Madison County Coaches, Mr. Dave Metz, uh, got a good heart. He's in good condition, because I tell you what, he was an assistant I hear for a long, long time. And finally, got the head job. I won't touch that line. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, refers to his teams as big and slow. He is, uh, I'm sure coaches would agree up here at the head table, the ultimate sandbagger. And without further ado, Dave Metz, the head coach at West Jefferson Rough Rider. I need to make a quick correction. It's not big and slow. We're small, but we're slow. <laughs> Need to clarify that. Uh, I too, like Paul, had the opportunity to meet Woody Hayes several years ago. Uh, a young man ran tailback for me by the name of Randy Kite. He was named the Goddess Player of the Week and had the opportunity to go over to the Goddess Club and Woody happened to be speaking that day. And we we're fortunate we could get our pictures taken with him the next day and you talk about I've never been more nervous in my life standing next to a legend and I just want to say Steve you know your routine tonight here did bring back a lot of memories and I'm like Paul I appreciate it you know, so. <laughs> now, I don't want you wishing me going no and ten up here uh, one one side lines up Paul obviously you know when our seasons were over last year the Three other coaches went to the weight room with our team. Seeing that you just had twins last Saturday, obviously you didn't spend a lot of time in the weight room. <laughs> West Jefferson, and you know, a lot of nice things have been said about West Jefferson up here, and I, I, I know these coaches, and uh, yeah, I was a longtime assistant at West Jefferson. I spent 14 years coaching under a couple good coaches, Gene Keel and John Sines, and uh, I've been there. This is my ninth year as head coach going in. And uh, like Woody Hayes football, we don't like to lose at West Jefferson. And that, that's a fact. Uh, I know nobody likes to lose, but we do not like to lose. You know, and, and that's something that sits with our kids too. And we have a good nucleus coming back. Uh, we're small in numbers this year. Uh, we have about 35 kids on our on our varsity team, and so we'll have a lot of kids playing both ways. But uh, we do have some kids coming back that, that we feel are, are very good football players. Uh, we have three linemen that re are returning to our offense, and that's led by our three-year starter at center, uh, Adam Tingler. Uh, we affectionately call him, call him something else. I won't mention it, Adam. But, uh, Adam works awful hard, one of our captains. And then we have Kevin Manning coming back this year, 6'4", 220. And Brian Daly, all three of those people started off the line this year. We're gonna build our line around them and hopefully we'll come up with a, a couple guards. Uh, hopefully by this Friday. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to wait right to the last minute. We're, we're not going to let anybody know who our guards are on Friday night. <laughs> but we, uh, uh, I doubled as the athletic director, Wes Jefferson, and that idiot, he made a heck of a schedule for us this year. Uh, we opened down at Wheelersburg. Oh, wait, i got to read this. Hold on. 
we have a charter bus to West Jefferson football game Friday. If anybody wants to go, ten bucks. Uh, you know, if you don't want to go to London's game or Madison Plains or Alder, we could sure use the help uh, Friday night. We're going down to Wheelersburg and, and talk about you. You got to tackle six six two ninety five. He's probably on your list, I imagine. Rex Piles. Uh, they have their other tackle was small, 6'3", 245. <laughs> and then they have a sophomore, and this is the truth, sophomore, 6'5", 300 pounds. Oh, and I'm telling you, they could put together a baby Huey line that would just, you know, fascinate you. But they're, they're an excellent football team. They were 9-2 last year. They lost their opener to Columbus Academy, who usually plays pretty good football. I know about that, too. But uh, and then they won nine straight before they lost in the playoffs. So we're, we're in for a great challenge Friday night. And then we turn around and play Division I Franklin Heights uh, out of the OCC. Uh, so we've got our work cut out for us, and we preached our kids that really our first two games, I think, are very indicative of our playoff chances. And, you know, like London, uh, we do have a schedule that, uh, that we put together to try to get to the playoffs. And that's a goal of ours. And uh, we play Utica, who's a playoff contender year in, year out. Uh, obviously, of course, we play London, who had a great football team last year and it expected to have another great football team this year. Uh, believe it or not, you know, and I've told people this and they laugh at me, uh, we're, we're changing a few things in West Jefferson. It, it, it's no secret anymore, but we, uh, we're experimenting with a little one-back offense kind of spread things out a little bit. Uh, I told that to uh, Jeff Gafford, who used to be the coach at Franklin Heights, and he started laughing. He said, those fans in the stand are just going to bust out laughing because they're going to wonder where the heck the fullback is, and uh, they're going to think I've gone totally nuts. But uh, we think we have our skill in the backfield this year, and we're going to utilize them. We have three good backs that are back, plus we had a move in from, uh, uh, from Arkansas. He's our Razorback, we call him a hog on a team, uh, very effectually, but we have uh, four backs back there that we think we can utilize, it, and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we have Tony Amon returning, uh, who's an excellent football player. Uh, Tony's a little bit bigger this year, and a little bit stronger, hopefully. And then we've got two good fullbacks in uh, Todd Stryker, who's one of our captains, and Matt Batoski, who didn't get the opportunity to play in the second half of the season because he broke his hand in the Licking Valley game. Uh, and then we have Chuck Don coming in, who's a little bit of a scat back. We're not, we're not used to somebody in the backfield, maybe, you know, 145, 150 pounds, but uh, we have one back there. It's a real hard runner. Thanks think going to help us out. And our quarterback is a, a junior this year, Corey Sadler. Uh, he got the opportunity to start four games last year after the London game because our uh, starting senior quarterback got hurt. So really, it's... Uh, you, you never like anybody to get hurt, but that opportunity gave that sophomore four games of experience, and uh, it, it really did him a world of good confidence-wise. So, uh, you know, we're going to put some people on the field in the skill positions that we think we can get the job done. And if we put together a line up front, I think you know we'll be very formidable. Uh, I think everybody up here, you know, realizes that since we've started doing this. Uh, that and talk about the BAC, you know, the first two years of the BAC, we've had the championship stay in Madison County. And I don't think there's any doubt. I, I think that championship will stay in Madison County. And uh, the only thing we do know for certain is that Madison Plains will not win the BAC. You know, they're going to be in the KTC. And knowing Dale, uh, the last time they competed in the KTC, I think you were champions or co-champions. And uh, I think they'll be gunning for those, uh, those again. But uh, I think West Jefferson, Jonathan Alder, and London are all, all going to put very formidable teams on, on the field. And, you know, I think that championship's going to stay here. Uh, we would just like it to stay closer to the Franklin County line, you know, than, than what it did last year. But uh, London had a tremendous team. I know that I had to laugh. Uh, the football preview came out. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the preview came out, and we were seven and three, of course, and said you know, we lost 
In close games, we lost to uh, near Catholic 7 nothing. We lost to Lakewood 18-17. I think they said it was a 7-7 seven, seven game in London, and in the second half, the uh, London broke loose. <laughs> broke loose. Somebody should have got the, the number on the truck, you know, that just kind of went right down the field. But, you know, the, the wheels fell off there, you know, and we didn't play too well. London played great. But uh, our kids obviously are looking forward, I think, to the Madison County rivalry. We're fortunate enough we get Madison Plains on our schedule. And we play Johnson Alder in London in the league. I think it's going to be a great year for Madison County football. And, uh, you know, let's hope we do get some teams back to the playoffs. You know, I'm looking forward to a, a great year. We're excited about football at West Jefferson, and I know everybody else is. I wish everybody good luck. I wish everybody has a healthy season. And, you know, we're going to get out there, and I can guarantee you, West Jeff, we'll try our hardest, and we'll be there on Friday night. Thank you. You know, those coaches I used to talk when they turned the mic off and hand it back to you. Sandbaggers, that is. Yeah, I'll be at Ohio Stadium in November. Tom Cooper to get him out of his box. He's recruiting. At this time, uh, I'd like to introduce our. Uh, do we have any more cheerleaders? That's it. Thank God. <laughs> hey! Another voice we do, Mr. Hay on the radio. Hey! I'd like to uh, introduce at this time. Our uh, keynote speaker, currently the uh, recruiting coordinator for the Ohio State Buckeyes, uh, replacing J.D. Graham in his first year. Um, Larry, for the last three years, has been the recruiting coordinator at the University of Pittsburgh. He uh, had earlier stints at Illinois, Purdue, and Northwestern. Uh, originally a native of North Olmsted, Ohio, which is up from my end, up there near Avon, near Cleveland. A 73 graduate of Ashland College, and on my notes, I don't need to turn this card around, married with uh, seven kids. And uh, something in my head ticks that he may be a blood brother unrelated to Mr. Jenny. May I introduce uh, Larry Petroff, the recruiting coordinator from Ohio State University. Maybe a little closer than you know, uh, we do have a set of twins. I got a set of twins, uh, twin boys that are four years old. Now. Um, I'd like to thank Joe Barlick and the Madison County Hospital for having me here tonight. And I'd like to wish all the coaches and the young men the best of luck in the season this year. Uh, you know, I think this is a great opportunity to get out and showcase some of you young men and, and hear about the coaches and, and get the season off on the right foot. Uh, we're as excited about the high school season as you are because that's our lifeblood. And we're going to do our best to uh, cover this state of Ohio with their talent. But we're not just going to settle for uh, players of the state of Ohio. We're going to go out and we're going to do the best we can to get the best players in the entire country. And uh, because that's what it's going to take, not only to win the Big Ten Championship, but to get that national championship back again. Uh, things have been pretty good so far. Everybody asked me how I like it. I said, it's great. We're undefeated. George Laner has been real positive. So I can't beat it. Uh, I was on George's show last week and he had a caller. He says, George, what's wrong? He says, you haven't said anything negative in two days now. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, things are going pretty well. I guess Coach Cooper came out and said this is his best team in six years. And that's because it is. We're not going to sandbag. We're, we're going to tell it the way it is because uh, our alumni get a little upset and uh, can't stand uh, you know, not getting all, the, all those big things done. But uh, he thinks it's the best team. And part of that is because of the off-season program that went on. It takes a tremendous amount of work to be successful at this level. Our kids uh, spent the entire summer in Columbus. Uh, we had 68 scholarship people there all summer. There were only six kids that were on scholarship that actually went home to spend time with mom and dad and family. The rest of them stayed there and worked out uh, four days a week. They ran, they lifted, they ran the gassers, they got ready for the heat, they got ready for the season. And what they did, as Billy Hill, the trainer, talked about the other day, is they took a little something and deposited in the bank. They created a little savings deposit. And when this season starts here next Saturday, it's going to be time to take a little bit out of every game. And uh, that's what it's all about. 
Um, I read the book, and you do win with people. Uh, the coaches up here know you can spend all day and all night Xing and Oing, and unless you have people put in those X's and O's, you're not going to be successful. I had the fortune, uh, good fortune to work with Paul Hackett the last few years. Paul right now is the offensive coordinator over with the Kansas City Chiefs, and, and he's going to become an even greater quarterback coach than he has been because uh, his good buddy Joe Montana joined him. But uh, Paul came from the NFL, and he felt very strong that he was going to outcoach everybody. And uh, he'd work 16, 18 hours a day trying to outcoach them and out X and O, and we just didn't have the people put in there uh, to get the job done. So uh, you know, we've got some good chemistry this year. They said the guys worked hard. Uh, there is no quarterback controversy. Bobby Hoing is the starting quarterback, and he's done an excellent job. Uh, it's nice to have someone like Brett Powers sit behind him. If we went out and started Brett Powers, one of the first things that would happen was the alumni would get all upset and say, why, this is the fourth year in a row you've got a one-year quarterback. So if everyone could be patient and uh, just allow Bobby to, to, to get in there and, and get some experience, take a few licks and, and under his belt and get the things going, He's got the potential to be an excellent quarterback. He's got an extremely strong arm, very, very bright, and I think with Bobby, he can lead us on some, some real good things. Uh, we've got a solid offensive line. If you read all those publications, when it comes to recruiting, I don't believe in all those. Uh, it doesn't matter to me if the kid's a preseason All-American, the top 25 USA today, and all those kinds of things. It depends on what they do on the field. Uh, but some of those publications did say we have the best uh, capital combination in the country for college football. And uh, I think that'll prove itself out this year. Uh, Corey Stringer's back, his ankle's fine. Got a little sprain last week in scrimmage, but he's going to do just fine, and, and he's ready to buff it up. Um, you talk about size. And you talk about the offensive line. What a young freshman come in this year, Larry Walden. I don't know if you're any stories about him. Larry, we sold him from across the border, 6'6" size 18 shoe, he came in at 353. <laughs> Just a puppy dog. The one thing that guys don't understand is in college football, or at, at all football, you've got to get from point A to point B to be successful. And Larry had gained a little weight, so we put him on the fat man's table. Uh, in four days, he went from 353 to 358. <laughs> uh, we started calling the Frito Bandito. I think he was going out and getting pizzas and cases of you know, chips at night. But he's slowly whittling down and he, you know, he's, uh, I don't know if mom's going to recognize him anymore. He's down about the 345 now. <laughs> you know, he's just, just, just a puppy dog. He's a real, we had to get him from all the pair of pants and everything. Uh, but those are the size, you know, the kind of people that we're looking at. And we've got some of them in Ohio, but they're going to be some of those all over the country. And that's what we've got to do. Uh, I know what these coaches are talking about because I coached high school football in the Cleveland area. And uh, we weren't just small but slow. We weren't quick and we were weak. Uh, one year we took our high school staff and in the spring we played a touch game with the seniors and we beat them. <laughs> That'll tell you what we were the year before. We figured out maybe we should in the spring we should play our juniors and then get our resume done. But uh, you know, that's, uh, that's an enjoyable time. Uh, right, so everyone keeps laughing about rice. Uh, well, you know, we got an easy game. I was told before, you know, it's about time we got back to playing teams like Rice opening up the season. The last time Rice had a winning season was 1963 until last year. They were 6 and 5. They slowly turned their program around. Um, they were one game away from being a bowl. The quarterback is back. A young man by the name of uh, Bert Emanuel. He was all Southwest Conference first team quarterback. And that's pretty good when you're talking about teams like Texas and Texas A&M and some of those other teams. Their wide receiver, Jimmy Lee, was first team all Southwest Conference. Uh, Emmanuel runs, I'm guessing, looking at him on film, probably a 4'5". 6'1", about 195 pounds. He's a quarterback that runs a 4'5". He was uh, second in the nation in passing efficiency. Their defense was second in the Southwest Conference in, in uh, giving up the score. So it's not a team that we're going to go over, we're going to take one. Uh, Lee Corso came out and gave us a little bulletin board information by stating his preseason upset pick for the week one was Rice over uh, Ohio State because we'd be looking ahead to Washington. And uh, the coaches know, and we've been drilling for the last month or two into their heads. Don't overlook the rights. Let's not worry about anybody else. We're going to take it one game at a time. 
this is the kind of team that they're going to attack us on defense. We, we don't know what, we, what they're going to do to us. Uh, with Bobby starting his first game, we expect a lot of blitzing and trying to shake him up. So uh, we've worked on uh, We spent at least one period a day on puff, and that's pass under pressure. That's the defense sending eight, nine, ten guys at a time, and we let them keep 13 back there so they got someone to cover. We're trying to get the ball up as quickly as we can. So they're, they're a good football team. We can't overlook them because we'll be in trouble. Uh, a little bit on Ohio State recruiting. As I said, we're going to recruit the best we can, best student athletes in the country. And one thing that, that uh, I've learned along the, long, along the way is that knowledge is power. And for you young men out there, smarter football players are better football players. When you get to college, those playbooks are going to be three and four inches thick. They're going to be thicker than that English book and that history book put together. And it's going to be like learning a new foreign language. So unless you have the mental capability to absorb and to accept everything that we're doing with you, you're going to be in trouble. So all those guys that think, you know, I'm going to be a great stud on the field, I'm going to spend all my time in the weight room, and I'm not going to leave here and get home and hit the books and study, you're making a mistake. Because it's what happens in that classroom and what happens above the shoulder that's going to determine how successful you're going to be. When we evaluate our players, we're going to put them, I've got a big board in my office, I'm going to rank them up there. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to rank them by their athletic ability. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to readjust that ranking by academic. Number one player does not make it our standards academically, and the number two player is much better and has scored sufficient on the SAT or ACT and, and has got all the board scores. We're going to put him right up top and put him in first. Because we can't worry about them coming in and whether or not they're going to be eligible or not, whether or not you know, they're going to be there for all four years. Uh, I know for a fact that school up north across the border, believe it or not, and some people are down here in this state are fans there, but, but they do have special programs for their athletes, which we don't. Our players are going to be mainstream. Last year we graduated 16 out of our 17 seniors, and that's something Coach Cooper is very, very proud of. <clears throat> so there's a lot to what goes on. The one thing that you underclassmen should understand is that the NCA standards are going to change. Right now, with a 2.0 and 11 core courses and 700 on the SAT, you meet the uh, minimum requirements eligibility-wise. But that's going to change. If you have that 2.0 and 13 core courses, which means you've got to take four years of English, you're going to have to have a 900 on the SAT. <coughs> Coaches keep saying, well, you know, not all kids you know, some of them are underachievers, but they're really bright kids. So what, what the presidents have said is fine. If they're really bright kids, then they'll be able to score 900 on the test. Then they say, well, you know, some of them just don't test well. I said, okay, then they can have 700 on the test, but then they should have 2.5 in the classroom. So it will be a sliding scale. If you score 800 on the SAT, you have to have a 2.25. And what I said, 13 core courses, which means you've got to have four years of English. And uh, it's going to be quite a, quite a change. It's going to be a difference. And there are going to be a lot of kids that, that were out there before that were just getting in by the skin of their teeth that we won't recruit anymore. And no one will recruit. So uh, those things have changed. The competition is much greater. Three years ago, we had 95 players on scholarship. Next year, we'll have 85. That's 1,000 less players receiving Division I scholarships than three years ago. 1,000 less players are going to drop down and trickle down into Division I, AA, or Division II. And that's a lot of people when you think about it around the country. So the competition is going to be even greater because of what happens academically and what we've done in reducing the, um, the scholarship. A little bit about my background. Uh, we keep talking about the celebration of the 68 championship team here. In 1968, I was part of the championship team. I played up in North Olmsted. We're undefeated. Uh, we had what, what guys are not calling the highest scoring offense in the state of Ohio. We averaged 47 points a game. In the first five games, our first team never saw the second half. So you know we were coming out at halftime, going in at halftime, 52 nothing, and playing the whole second half with our third team. So I, I was excited about that. This summer we had a reunion, and my wife couldn't understand why it was so so important to me to get back and see these guys I hadn't seen in 25 years. One of my buddies said, you know, it was a little different. We weren't just teammates, we were family, we were like brothers. <coughs> After 10 minutes with each other, like we had never left. And I, some of those guys I hadn't seen in 25 years. And it was really great. And talking about people not having sides, 
Our starting guard was 152 pounds. The biggest guy on our team was six foot two, 205, and he was our tight end. Our other guard ran the 220 on the track team. We weren't very big, but we just were determined not to quit. We had a kind of team that the players were in control. It was our football team. Our booster club used to take us out to uh, uh, Howard Johnson's for pregame meal. And we're playing our first conference game, and the newspapers up there are picking us to lose by a touchdown. Our booster club bet $1,000 with their booster club. I mean, guys were sick all day. It was a uh, pretty good rivalry. And uh, our coaches are on the buses coming back from pregame meal, and they're cracking jokes. Seniors got off the bus, and we got together and said, you know, we better go in and talk to them. They, these guys got to straighten out their act. So about four or five of us went to, went to coaches' room and said, coaches, you know, we're ready to play. You guys better get ready. They looked at us. They said, you guys are so tight. We're just trying to loosen you up. We went out and beat them 58 to nothing. And uh, it was just the kind of team where the, where the young men took over. It was our football team, and no one was going to stop us. So, you know, we went on to have a great season. We undefeated and have a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I went on to play at Ashland College. I played for Dr. Martin Elliott and retired this year. In 1972, our senior year, we were undefeated again. We are 11-0 and ranked 11th in the nation. So, as a player, I participated on two undefeated teams. Coached high school ball. Then in 1984, I went to Division III school up in Cleveland, Case Western Reserve. And it was amazing. Number five engineering school in the country. Um, I coached a defensive line. I had two kids that were geniuses in math. Talking about a, a pursuit drill, I went to one of them and I said, said, Jonathan, I said, straightest, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. He looks at me and says, you know, coach, depends on the third and fourth dimension. Now, in the fourth dimension, I look at him and hit the guy with the football. I don't care. These guys were, I mean, it, it, we used to call it semi retirement. I mean, you tell them once and they knew it and they learned it. When we got there, they, they had gone 0-24 and they had the longest losing streak in college football. Our third year there, we went on the field. And it was a lot of fun. So I've been fortunate enough to be around a lot of schools and a lot of programs like that. It's excited me to come to Ohio State because I think Coach Cooper has got the vision and he's the kind of man that can do, those, can do that at Ohio State. I'm excited about the move here. I don't know if my wife was. Said, I've got a set of twin boys that are four. On their first birthday, their first birthday was celebrated in their fourth state. So she is a vagabond. Found out that she was expecting twins, and I took a job in Northwestern about a week before they were born. We made a quick trip up there. Uh, got out of town before they went 0-11 uh, and 11, jumped over to Purdue. Was at Purdue for a little bit. Season ended. Some buddies of mine were at Pitt. Paul Hackett got the job, and they called me up. I said, you got to get your family over here. And I, I don't know. And I said, deal is, you got to bring my wife and my kids on the interview. You got to fly them all over. And they said, OK. And I said, well, they must be serious. So I went over there and took that job. So it was one year. We lived in four states. And my oldest son was uh, three years old. People asked him where he's from. He said he was from Chicago, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how much about geography. But they've learned real, very quickly. Uh, one of the twin boys out, and this is a true story. About a month ago during the summer, he'd been misbehaving. So I'm home and I scold him and I spank him. I take him up to his room. He's going to get his, his time out in his room. And he's got a temper. He's the best athlete of the group. And he doesn't want to lose. And, and uh, he's got this little temper. So I put him in his room. I said, now, Isla, did you understand? And he looks at me and he grits his teeth. He goes, you know what, Dad? I'm going, you know, he's four years old. Don't say what you're going to say. He looks at me right in the eye and says, go Michigan. Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I went downstairs. I told my wife, I said, You handle it. I don't know what I'm going to do. This little son of a gun. And he learned within two months what, how important it was. People had told him, you know, I tried to break him in. So he had a very, very good understanding of how important it was uh, here to beat that school up north. Uh, so we're going to do a lot of good things this year. As I said, we're excited about the season. We're excited about the direction that the program is going in. And I think we've got a, we've really got an opportunity to be a good team. But uh, before I close, and I might end this up with a few questions uh, from the audience. I want to talk to you young men about a few things. When we talk about success. We talk about success in, in, in the football field. And that's, what, that's what it's here for. And Coach talked about 
you know, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, you know, if you don't keep score, but we keep scoring, it's important. Uh, people don't understand coaches' lives, their livelihood depends on what happens with some 15-year-old or 18-year-old kid on that football field on a, on a Friday night or a Saturday afternoon. And I, told, I spoke at the Rotary Club downtown, about 500 people. And I said, you got people have got to understand you've got to have patience with this football team. Bobby Hawking is 19 years old. How many of you go out and perform your jobs in front of 94,000 people live and about another million and a half on television? And he's going to go out and attempt to perform a job. And one of the toughest things that can happen is for the people in the stands to boot. And that holds true with the high school. You know, think about performing your job in front of a couple thousand people. I remember sitting in the stands, scouting a, a young high school player, and listening to some parents, a father, moaning and groaning, and complaining about the, about the head coach. I went up to him, I said, the game was over. I said, sir, where do you work? I said, because I know you're extremely successful, you're a multimillionaire, and you've never made a mistake. And he looked at me, he said, well, I'm a salesman at the store. I said, great, what time are you coming to work tomorrow? He told me, I said, I'll be there. He said, why? I said, I'm going to stand in the background and yell and holler and hoot at you about what a jerk you are and you don't know what you're doing, just like you did to that coach all night. <laughs> and he looked at me and I said, you don't put up what they do. And, and it's, you know, it's really disappointing when that happens because you're talking about 15, 16 year old young men getting out there doing the best job that they can to be successful as they can. I don't know if anybody ever steps on, on an athletic field and thinks about going out there and says, you know, I, I think we'll lose them. Nobody does. I'm 42 years old and I've broken down into tears after many, many games. And uh, I know the young men do and the coaches do. And our livelihood depends upon what happens on Friday night and Saturday, mine even more so. Because if we don't, if you don't do it, I'm unemployed again. And I've got seven kids I've got to feed. But success in the football field also relates to success in life. And there's eight things. Vision. Vision is seeing what you can accomplish and imagining. Persistence. You know, that's when the tough get going and the going get tough. You want to keep going when the things are good and when things are bad. Fight through it and get the job done. Effort. Effort turns ability into accomplishment. It's the cornerstone of achievement. Goals. You want to set goals and you want to take, take charge of your future. Know where you're going. Direct your life. Attitude. Positive attitude is one of life's greatest treasures. Opportunity. Opportunity comes to everyone. You've got to accept it, and you've got to carry on with it. Responsibility. Take responsibility for yourself and for your performance, whether it's success or failure. And success. Being the best you can every day. Set high standards and live up to them. And we talk about success in the field, but it relates to success in the classroom and it relates to success in life. People don't understand what a great proving ground and educational experiences that athletics are. And if you think of one thing, guys, don't fail on the field, don't fail in the classroom. Um, I don't know if there are any English teachers here. I hated English. I, I, I could not understand how diagramming a sentence was going to help me get a job and what it was going to do for me. Every day I deal with writing letters and talking with people and getting up here and speaking. And it's the one thing I wish I could go back and, and redo and kick myself in the fan in. As I talk to my kids, I talk to them about how important that foundation is and how important academics are. So I appreciate the opportunity to come here tonight and speak with you. And again, I wish everyone luck. Uh, I know usually people have questions about the Ohio State football program. So at this time, if there are any questions, we'll spend a couple minutes and see if we can answer some. Are there any? None? Are you serious? <laughs> All these Buckeye fans, no one wants to know what's going to happen on Saturday. Yes, sir. What are you predicting for the record this year? What am I predicting for the record? Are we going to win the Big Ten? Did you see uh, Bob Knight uh, after they lost in the NCAA tournament, his crystal ball? I don't have a glass, but he turned it over. I, I can't say that. I have no clue what it's going to be. You know, we're going to get out there today. Our kids busted their fans. It's been hot the last couple of weeks. We went through three a days. Not just two days, we went through three a days. 
We practice every afternoon. They get on the field at 1.30, and they get off about uh, 4 o'clock. That's a long time, and that sun is out there, and it's hot, you know, and it's humid, and they're, you know, they're doing everything they can to be successful. But one thing that impresses me is that these kids have a vision, they have a goal, and they set these, these goals high, and they've worked for it. Who knows what that what the record is going to be, but I tell you one thing, the young men have put forth their best, best effort in the offseason in preparation, both mentally and physically, and uh, I just think, you know, the old coach thought, we've got a chance to be a pretty good football team. How that translates, I don't know. Yes, sir. Starting with their tight end, can you use their names, heights, and weights going across? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Cedric Saunders is the tight end. Um, to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you how big he is. I'm guessing 6'3", about 240. You know, we've got the freshman, we've got two freshmen backing him up. Bob Hauser, I know the freshman better. I've only been there a couple months. Uh, Bob Hauser's from Westlake. Bobby's about 6'4". He's going about 245 right now. And we've got the other freshman, Eric Moss. He's just another puppy dog. He's 6'5", 290 at the tight end. So those are the two backs. You know, when you talk about a tight end coach, it's 6'5", 290 pounds. That's a pretty good size. Um, you know, Stringer's about 325. He's one, one tackle. Uh, Klein's about 290. I think Rush, the center, is a lightweight and off the line, about 275. Um, Mono's 285, 290. And then um, Jason Winrow is about 310, 315. So we've got a bunch of lightweights, you know, little puppy dogs. But we've got four seniors on that offensive line. You know, uh, Stringer's the only, only on the class, but he's a sophomore. But, you know, with uh, Saunders and Galloway, the wide receivers, uh, you know, we don't have, we don't have the, uh, called franchise tailbacks. Um, but I think our depth of tailbacks is as good as anybody in the country. You know, Eddie George had talked about the, you know, how they mold the specimen. I think he was the model. And he is just cut out of the rock. And he has worked his pain off. And the other one that Coach Cooper pointed out that his work ethic this summer has been Jason Simmons. A lot of people say Jason's a little light. He was 250. He's about 265 right now. But, you know, I've talked to some of the NFL scouts and they talk about, you know, he doesn't have some of the size and speed, some, some of the intangibles they're looking at. Uh, one guy said the other day, he said, but for some reason, he's four sacks away from setting the all-time sack record at Ohio State. He's that's pretty good production. This young man plays with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He started linebacker for him this year, Jerry Assassin. Jerry's out of Youngstown, Ohio. He's recruited by two colleges, Carnegie Mellon, which is a Division three school in Pitt. He holds the all-time um, tackle record at Pitt. Uh, he was drafted in the 12th round. They said he was too slow, he was too small, wasn't strong enough. It's his fifth year in the NFL, and he's going to start this year. But the rookie had to play a game against the Chicago Bears in that 12th half. So, uh, you know, there are those under, underachievers that, that end up producing very well. Any, anyone else? Kind of offense? One versus pass? Uh, Ryan Hudson's my good friend. He's the guy that helped me get the job here. He's a quarterback coach and a passing game coordinator. But you've got to remember that we've got a first-year quarterback. So as many times we can possibly turn around and hand that ball off and take him away from it and just take the pressure off him, the better we're going to be. You know, the bottom line is you've got to win games. People complain we don't throw enough. They complain 25 years ago when Woody was here. You know, it was three yards in a cloud of dust. But the bottom line, it's just like in recruiting. Everybody's saying, we've got to get, we're going to take 25, we've got to have 20 from Ohio. Well, it doesn't matter if you have 20 from Ohio or 5 from Ohio. We go to Pasadena, all that will go away. We go to Pasadena, no one's going to sit back and say, you know, they ran the ball 60% and they only threw the ball 40%. Bottom line is, what happens at the end of the game if you win or lose? So early going in the season, we've really trimmed down the package passing game-wise. As I said, we've got a stable of four excellent tailbacks. We've got two big studs. You know, you're talking about 250-pound fullbacks, guys that run 4-7, 4-6. You just turn around and hand that ball off. You know, most experiences on the offensive line, too, they average almost 300 pounds. So let's just keep handing it off and pounding it. And we've got a good defense. Best defense, best thing for our defense is for them to be sitting on the bench. You know, taking some water and waving them out on the television camera, that's the best defense in the world.
Diane Tailback. Right now, this morning on the depth chart, it was Eddie George, but uh, that might change from Saturday. You know, as I said, we've got, we got four pretty good ones, you know. Um, McGuire, and Butler, and Raymond Harris. you got four guys, you know, just to keep saying, and that ball up, you're not going to get a big drop on Oh, I thoroughly enjoy going against Papa Joe. Uh, Papa Joe to me is what the guy up north was. I spent three years in Pittsburgh. I don't believe him. I don't trust him. I don't like him. I have got a file. There's two schools I have filed. One is Penn State. The other one is Michigan. And it's my goal in life to make sure we beat both of them every year. You gotta call for where you see it. Anyone else? Well, thank yes. Sir. We saw a week ago in the paper where Lorenzo Styles moved up the depth chart. He's still not one in the middle. See, Lorenzo Styles moved up the depth chart before we even practiced, yes. He's still number one. I don't foresee anybody beating him out. You know, one thing Coach Cooper said is we had, as I said, 60 some guys spend the summer in Columbus and work their panties off and got ready for the season to start. We had two inside linebackers decided to go home and we talked to them every week. And, yeah, we're working out, Coach. We'll be back. We're ready. We're set. But they didn't make it. Lorenzo got moved inside. I said, you know, the quarterback of Rice is very good and he's very scary. The defensive standpoint, as I said, I coach the defensive line. If you sit back and you don't allow him to break the pocket and scramble too much, he's good enough where he can hurt you throwing the ball. They're in a one bat, three wide receiver tight end offense, so they're spreading out. If you rush him hard, he breaks the seam. As I said, he's four or five, he'll hurt you. Our linebackers are all big, strong, and fast. He breaks the seam once, Powers or Williams or uh, Lorenzo puts a nice lick on him, he's gonna be wanting to sit back and throw the ball or hand it off. We got, I mean, I told Coach Pluggage, I said, you know, Fred, after all these years on Ohio State, you're finally gonna have a chance to be a good football player. And he's got some stuff back there. Yes, sir. Are you anticipating a Fred Benner side game Saturday? And from what I read in the paper, that he's going to stand back there 20 yards and run around Saturday? You know, I don't think so. You know, Big Daddy's got a little quickness to him. Our offensive line coaches kept complaining that the, you know, they weren't supposed to be slanting so early in the season. Coach Young said, we're not slanting. He's just reading everything and going. So we've got some, we've got some quicks up front with the defensive line. Jason Sims is a tenacious player. He's a strong player. Said he's four sacks away from setting all, you know, all-time Ohio State record there. So we're going to pull a little heat on him. We're going to, you know, we're going to do it under control and uh, get after him. Our secondary is pretty good. So we can, we can cover some people down the field. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, how's uh, Brian Stoker doing? Brian's okay. You know, he's... Is he going to see any time this year? Or? You know, that's too early to say. Um, you know, he's worked hard. He's, he's getting stronger. He's getting bigger. The one thing you've got to realize is when you come from high school, you're the big fish in the small sea. And when you come to a school like Ohio State, you become a small fish in the big sea. As I said, we're going to recruit the best student athletes we can around the country. And uh, I've got a list that on my way home, I've got the car phone. I'm going to call five running backs. Four of them are out in California, the other one is in Arkansas. And so we're going to go out there, and he's battling against people with some experience. They said our two outside backers are as fine as, as, fine as a linebacker that I've seen. So, uh, you know, he's continuing to get better. If he keeps working, he's going to, you know, he may see some time. Anyone else? I, number one recruit in the state of Ohio. We're not allowed to. <coughs> NCA does not allow me to make that statement. Um, Come on, you want to end up like Washington? <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me about some people I can acknowledge in recruiting them, right now there are 13 guys in the state of Ohio that we're really excited about getting after. Richard Simmons? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, our coaches are doing a really good job. I, I tell you, I, I've sort of been on their backs. I've, I've been a, a coach, I've, I've coached on the field at this level, I know what it's all about, and then being a recruiting coordinator, I have a little sympathy for them, but then again, I don't. But then on them, I, I force them to hand me in, pull them up, so I, I count how many phone calls they've made every every week. 
I get on their butts, we do it the staff meeting so everyone else knows. We've got coaches calling up 30 or 40 kids a week with our nine coaches, so we're getting, getting a good bid in. We're, we're right now, around the country, we're 320 kids. We start out with 1,000, we cut it to 320, we'll visit 60 and probably sign about 20. So uh, we're going to get after it, we'll as I said, get the best thing after we can. Thank you very much again, I appreciate it. Best of luck to everyone. Thanks, Coach. And at this time, uh, we'd like to wrap this up. I'd like to thank Joe Barlack and uh, Johnny Gillespie. On behalf of the uh, Madison County Hospital and their sports medicine program, uh, I'd like to thank you for having me out here. And coaches, it has been a pleasure. Uh, I can always leave you on a little woody. Uh, and shake your head. Please got saved by the cat. Let me tell you this. It's been a long night. And I tell you, there's nothing like, like high school athletics, nothing like competition, nothing like getting after it, and being part of what I always consider the cream of the cream. And you want to talk about a guy that did it? How about JJ? Jimmy Jackson was he unbelievable? What do I do by cow? Football season. Guys, you heard all the coaches talk. The two youngsters out there tonight, uh, Coach is right. I can diagram, we can get you the books, we can get the tutors, make sure you go to class. But if you don't carry that football off right tap and score, the cheerleaders don't jump up and down, the band doesn't come out at halftime, the alumni and faculty don't support our team. Whether you talk about high school, college, or pro, it's all the same. It's the wash. You know, the thing I used to kid about, uh, when I'm 12 and 0, and it's 22 below in Columbus, Ohio, and you're watching the Rose Bowl, and you see Arch come out with Courtney Green, all of a sudden people say, there's Woody Hayes in Columbus, Ohio. Doesn't he do a great job <laughs> coaching that football team? Hats off and on down from the recruiting, down to the defensive line to the secondary. Hell, even Bozick that hands out shoulder pads. They got the fine up close program down there in Columbus, Ohio. But if Coach Coop goes out to Florida, loses to Syracuse, you guys in that same house at 22 below say that dirty up so he's got to go and he's from Tennessee and he's from Ohio, boy. Fullback going off right tackle. You lineman opening the hole. Quarterback getting that snap. And you know what? It's so fun. Because it's all like a well oiled machine. I said you win with people, it's so true. You get the quarterback gets the snap from center and gives it to the fullback. And he goes off right tackle and goes in the end zone. Fans and stands, they go crazy. The cheerleaders jump up and down. In fact, And that is what it's all about, because that's what happens when you execute. Half a success, everybody has the ability to win, but are you mentally and physically going to prepare yourself to win? That's what I always told all, all my ball players. We love to jump up and down. We love to be winners. But like Coach said earlier, it starts in April and May. you got to prepare yourself. God bless you and have a great, great year because in the state of Ohio, it doesn't much get better than that. Thank you.